we give folks just a minute here so organized today I am working on um, the blue and white quilt that I showed you last week and so it is time to put the borders on the quilt and I thought we could do that live and I could show you um, sometimes borders can be a little bit tricky and there is a common problem with borders coming out being wavy and so I wanted to show you how I do my borders and can keep them from being wavy. Um, first though, I just finished this quilt it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. And this is a quick t-shirt quilt that I fit in this week because graduation is this weekend and um, it was kind of a quick hey can you fit me in kind of thing and I said of course and so I just finished this. Um, this one was very quick and I think this was the smoothest, fastest t-shirt quilt I've done. It was so quick. Um, everything just went together. Um, I actually had the, the sashing, the, the perfect sashing, and it, I don't know if you can tell from there, but it's kind of a tone on tone. It's a, it's kind of a hatched um, pattern to it. And it was already in my stash and I had just enough to do it. Um, and I had just enough backing already. And I did go and pick up this uh, binding because the recipient, who is a retiring teacher, loves black and white polka dots. And I guess she's a classy little thing. Um, and so I found this black and white polka dot that it reminds me of like pearl bracelets because they were, it's black and white polka dots that are strong. So it's not, you know, the typical even Steven uh, polka dots. But anyway, I thought it was really pretty. Uh, so she's gonna pick this up tomorrow and I'll have all the details and pictures and everything in it for tomorrow because tomorrow is Friday and that's when I like to show off the finishes um, along with a lot of other folks in the quilting community. There's all of the Friday finish blog link ups and everything. So I'll do that tomorrow and you can see all the close up pictures and things. So this is the first quilt that I've done that actually had glitter. I thought that was funny. Right, so anyway, let me set this aside so it's not in our way and we'll get started. Um, totally stepped on something. Okay. So. I actually have three borders that are going to go on this quilt, but I'm just going to show you the first one so we don't go too long. Um, but the first thing you might be tempted to do is to just go by the math um, on how long your border should be. And that can kind of get you into trouble a little bit. If your seam allowances are off at all, it might make your border too long or too short. And so what I do is I fold my um, quilt in half and I measure along the middle. So for this one, let me see here. Let me get it turned right. I'm going to sew the sides on first and the top and bottom off last. So this is what the middle looks like. Let me see here. I've got two, four, eight. Okay, so this is my long ways. And so I'm going to fold this in half like this, and then I'm going to measure down the center. And what that does, measuring the center, is because sometimes we're not perfect in our stitching and the ends can be different. And so if we measure across the center, then that gives us um, the ability to square up the quilt. And that's also why we don't want to just you know, measure each individual side or just lay a strip across and cut it because then we can end up with a wonky quilt. So fold it in half and we're going to measure the, the middle, which is here. 
And so I measure mine at 35, so 70 inches for the sides. So what I've done is I've already cut my 70 inch strips here and I've labeled them for the sides. Um, <coughs> so I label one and then I cut this to the, to the length. So I've got 70 inch strips here for the sides. And then while I'm here, I go ahead and I fold it the other direction so I can get the length of the top and bottom. Like this. And again, I measure in the center and not the ends so we can square up the quilt. And this one should be right at 62 inches. Now what I do here is we have 62 inches and then I'm going to add on uh, the width of my strips <clears throat> for each side, okay? So my strips that I'm adding on are two and a half inches wide, um, and then I'm going to have half an inch taken away from the seams that I'm going to put on. So two and a half inches is five, um, two and a half inches on each side. So it's five inches I'm adding uh, to the 61, which makes it 66. And then I'm going to subtract a half an inch because of the quarter inch seam allowance on each side that I'm going to take off when I sew these on. So that makes it 65 and a half. I hope that makes sense. Ask me questions if it does not make sense and I can put up like a little diagram or something of how that's supposed to work. Um, and if you catch this on replay, like feel free to ask questions and, and put the comments in. I love coming back through and I will chat with people if, who, who um, come in on the replay. It's totally okay to do that. Um, so anyway, so I have those strips cut here and I set them aside and see, I always love keeping um, these little post-it notes that are sticky on one side. I use these a lot to label when I, when I do a lot of cutting. So I use this and I label my sides and my tops and bottoms and then I set them aside so I don't get them mixed up. Okay, so we're gonna do the sides first. And unfold this. This one's a little bit tricky to keep track of because all the blocks are the same and just the two colors. So I can't like keep track of one fabric or something for the corner. So I have to continually count to make sure that I'm on the right side. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. So this is our side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in half for just a second and I'm going to put a crease here, which thankfully this one has a seam right where the half is, but I'm going to put a crease <clears throat> and I'm going to open it up and put that crease here in the center. And then I'm going to take my first strip and I'm going to fold it in half as well. It's wanting to twist on me. I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to crease it just with my fingers here so that I get a little dent. And then I'm going to put that little dent right where the crease is on my quilt, where that middle part is. I'm going to line those up together and I'm going to stick a pin there just like that. Now I'm going to move down and I'm going to pin one half of the quilt at a time. I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to pin the very end. like so. Then I'm going to line up these edges nice and neat and I'm going to just fill it with pins. And probably 
I'll cut one every couple of inches. I don't like exactly measure it out. But what I do want is I don't want, I want to keep it from shifting. So I'm going to do several pins down each side. Sad. I've been living across the Kentucky border for a little while. Okay. And I often, when I do piecing, I don't pin a lot. So for me to take the time to do these pins, I want to impress on you that it is important because, um, you know, I guess for me, I don't, since I don't do a lot of pinning because I, you know, my, the time that I have in here is precious. And so I really have to weed out some things. Um, pinning is important when it comes to the borders. This is how we keep it from getting wavy because what's going to happen is if we have one side that's a little bit bigger or smaller, or if we need to, if it needs to kind of get eaten up by the, the feed dogs and pull through, we can do that. <clears throat> and then we don't end up with the outside of the border being uh, longer than the inside of the border. We're gonna keep it all nice and, and happy and in the same place. So I've got the one half done. I'm just going to slide it down, lay the center flat, take this end down, and do the same thing. I'm going to line it up with this end and put a pin at the end first. And the reason I do that is because sometimes when we shift things, if I were to start here and just pin down this way, everything's going to get pushed and I may end up with one side longer than the other, uh, either the, the border being longer or the quilt. And what this allows me to do is I can stretch this out and then I can lay it, let it lay naturally the quilt underneath the border and then place the pins in and it will keep it happier and more likely to be even. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, ask questions if it doesn't make sense. Um, even if you're watching on the replay, um, and I can try to help you with that. Let's see. Pins, 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 pins. Um, what I'm going to do here when I'm done with this is flip it over and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll take it over to the machine. and sew it on down the line. Okay, all the pins are in. All right, so we're gonna switch it. Hi guys. Don't forget to drop and say hello so I can see who you are. It's always much more fun when we can chat. Um, so I'm going to, once again, fold the side in half and make a little crease, although there's a seam but I always still do it just in case if I'm off and then open this up like this get my border strip pinch it to make my seam Oh, I just did that and then I lost it. Because that's what I do. We are uh, kind of tired today. Um, my lovely in-laws had been visiting. They came in on Tuesday and just left this morning. And we just love having them. But we're always tired too. You know when company leaves, you just, you just are tired. Oop, I can feel pins on the bottom tickling my feet. Okay, so I've got the center pin. I'm going to pin the end. Make sure it's straight. And then pin down the way.
Okay. Do the next portion. I'm sorry there's no way to uh, kind of fast forward these sections when we're doing the live video. That's okay. This is real life. I am real life. This is what I do and what it takes. And I enjoy this stuff, even when it's the, the pinning. Because it's necessary and it just, it's worth it. So I'm going to do the other half here. Try to make sure that it's nice and flat. I have got the um, theme song to Doc McStuffins stuck in my head because the children are on spring break. Um, if you don't know, we homeschool. And we uh, got all caught up with the weather taking forever to get warm and we basically forgot about spring break. <laughs> and so finally, my nine year old this week said, Mommy, are we ever going to have spring break? And I realized that we're almost done with the school year. Like we have, you know, a week left of the school year. But we went ahead and let her take a few days off this week with Grandma and Grandpa being here. Um, but anyway, because that, we've got Doc McStuffins has been on today. There has been a lot of Doc McStuffins. And I keep catching myself wanting to whistle the song. Okay, so I've got this. I'm going to take this over and let's go over to the sewing machine. This is that part where I need um, the camera guy to come with me. I've got a really cute husband. I wish he would come do it for me. Make him sit in here and hold the camera for me. All right. Let's turn this. Okay, I think you can see there. All right. Let's put this under. And I'm just going to sew straight down. If it were to feel like there was a big difference between um, the quilt top and the border. I would put whichever side feels the biggest on the bottom so that the feed dogs have the ability to uh, kind of gather that up at a faster rate. Uh, but I don't really see too much of a difference here. So I'm just gonna keep the border on the top. wanting to go to the corner. So here's another little trick for you. If your machine is wanting to eat the corner when you first put the fabric in, um, here's what you can do. I keep a little bag, a little bag that is full of little scraps and I take out a little scrap and I let it be the first thing that goes in. And I kind of start it in the middle of that scrap before I put the fabric in. Well, what is going on? Oh, I see. My thread's not in the right place. So we will do that again. Let's re-thread the machine. Like I said before, guys, this is just life. This is real life sewing and business running, and it's just, it's not super glamorous, but it is fun. And, you know, real life doesn't have an edit button. Right? 
I'm gonna sew that. Now it'll work. Got a couple of little threads here. Okay. So I put this little, I don't know, a tag or a tab there, and it pulls. Um, it gets the threads pulling at a different angle so that once once you put the what you're sewing on underneath it's almost like when you're chain piecing and how you never have that problem it kind of takes that uh, threat of eating the fabric away and i am terrible i do sometimes sew over my pins i know we shouldn't do that and i try to not always do it but i do sometimes when I get a good roll going. I don't know, can you see my little thing here? I've got a little, um, I took one of those 3M hanging tabs. You know, the, um, the real sticky, hangers that you can that you put on the back of a picture or something and then when you right when you're ready to take it down you just yank it down and it'll pull the thing off um i have one of those and i put it here i measured out where my quarter inch seam was or is and i put it here um so that i have a place for my fabric to butt up against so that i can keep an accurate quarter inch seam quarter inch foot but I don't like it and I don't think that it's accurate it's kind of like you have to be at a weird angle for the quarter inch um, to line up properly or maybe just my my needle might be off to one side or something like that um, but it it doesn't um, I don't know it doesn't do a good enough job so I did this and I really like it this is um, been the best way for me to keep my quarter inch seam and it's easy and occasionally I will switch it out maybe the next time I have to um, do a new one I will let you guys see exactly what I do to do that but it's so handy because it stands up a little bit and then my fabric can just run up against the side of it and it uh, keeps that accurate seam allowance. it up I'm making sure that my seams that I've pressed underneath are going the right direction sometimes they need to go up and when they hit this uh, little ledge here they will flip under and I'm just trying to keep those going in the same direction that I pressed them so they'll lay flatter If you can see my headband, I know you're watching me with my head down. Um, my headband is an original um, from my daughter, my oldest daughter. She just turned 17. And she is um, starting her own business because that's what we do around here. And she is making headbands. 
and bracelets and flowers and accessories and things. She's really interested in hair and is planning on going to cosmetology school. And so um, she has decided to start making accessories and things on her own. And then she's opening up an Etsy shop. And um, her business is called uh, Loves to Not, which is super cute. Um, but I just love it. She's got, she takes the crochet, she does the, she crochets at the top, and then she puts elastic, if you can see, she puts elastic on the bottom so that they hold really well, just like um, other, you know, like store bought um, headbands. And they're not, then they're not too hot because you don't have the um, yarn going all the way around your head during the summertime. And she's made some for her sisters that have flowers on them and stuff. They're so cute. Um, and I didn't wear it this time. I think maybe I had it on my last video. Uh, but she made me a bracelet for Mother's Day that was a black um, band that was crocheted and it had elastic underneath it, um, which is so handy for me to have because I have weird wrists and I have a hard time finding stuff that will fit really well. And it's either to get it to go over my hand, then it's too big to be comfortable around my wrist and it makes it too loose. Or, um, you know, either that or it'll be too tight. And what she made me fits just right and it's really cute. It's really, really cute. So, I'm proud of her. Um, I'm proud of all my kids. But I think it's pretty cool that she's wanting to do that. She's taken a business class and, um, this year she's going to take um, marketing and entrepreneurship, which really excites me because I, my, I mean, heck, my personality type is actually the entrepreneur. <laughs> so I am loving that, and especially with cosmetology and stuff and running her own business and she knows that um, she's got to prepare for that in a little different way. Okay, I'm almost done here. to next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press these open and then I'm going to do exactly what I did the first time but on the top and bottom I'm going to uh, fold them in half and pinch it to make a little line make a little divot and then I'm going to do the same thing to the borders and just lay them across and do all of the pinning and then come back over here and stitch it on and I will have a lovely um, border on this and I will because I've got two more borders to go on this too I'm gonna do that um, off camera and then I will post a picture later so you can see the borders and the finished product. Um, and I still haven't decided how I'm going to quilt this. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, I don't want to over quilt this one. Uh, I want it to be the quilt that we are um, remaking is very fluffy. So I don't want to um, kind of overkill it with the quilting. So I want to come up with something that is uh, going to help accentuate the design um, and still leave it uh, pretty and open. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Anyway, anyway, well, thanks for everybody who hung out with me and um, I will catch you later. Um, don't forget to ask any questions or, uh, you know, come through on the replay and, and leave your comments and stuff too. And I will come back through and say hi to everybody and, and chat. Um, but for now, I will see you all later. I'm going to finish this border. Bye.